winding down to the end of our daily dose uh, daily dose of reality relationship advice with moi advice columnist Deborah Cooper I uh, really appreciate everybody's words of support everybody's been really you know very in, uh, telling me how much they're enjoying this series and that's great because you know it's something that I enjoy too um, some days I'm telling you though these people just like drain my energy I'm just like oh my god how can you even be can you even walk and breathe at the same time it's kind of interesting and these are some of the letters that you guys don't even see I just I can't so I just delete them but um, we got five I think five letters today in uh, in the column and uh, if you have a question that you'd like to submit either for this or for the Wednesday night uh, live stream for as a topic please look at the description below in the show description and you'll see a link this will say submit your advice question to Deborah just click that and type in you know, fill in all the blanks as it has releases and has some basic information about you that I need in order to make a, a full and complete response so let's go let's talk about this letter number one my boyfriend of almost four years who recently told me he is bored with his friends and the people around him he decided that he wants to find a new friend. He, it's, he seems to want to have a girl as a close friend. Normally this wouldn't bother me, but he's been really concerned. Oh, I bet he has. And about things that haven't happened yet. He worries because he has someone in mind. He thinks that she is attractive and worries that he may become too close to this girl. He worries that he may hurt me by crossing the line with this girl. I'm really unsure what his motives are with having this new friend. Should I be concerned that he wants to cheat on me or is he just worrying too much about something that hasn't happened? He keeps asking me what he should do. Should he get to know this girl or should he stay away? I don't know what to tell him, but I do worry. Oh, okay. What he's telling you is that everything in his world is gray and dull and boring and painful and just unexciting and mundane and all those things except this girl. She brings rainbows and sunshine, the birds singing, angels playing their horns, the clouds part and the sunshine comes through. And that's telling you that your time with dude is over. That's what he's telling you. Now, you don't get it, it seems, but what he's doing, he's telling you all the stuff about this other one because he wants you to have enough sense to recognize what's going on and to break up with him that's what he wants to he doesn't want to be the bad guy he doesn't want to break up with you so he's telling you all the stuff about how he feels about some other woman and you sitting there just looking at him I'm like what's wrong with you anyway um, what you need to do is tell him you don't know what to tell him this is what you tell him you tell him okay well I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying and it sounds to me like you're ready for this to be over and I think that you know, it's in light of the way that you feel about this woman, that that's the, our best bet. So it's been great. It's been a wonderful four years. Thank you for all the great memories. Now you go on over there and do what you want to do with this other woman. And I'm going to go that way and you go this way. That's what you tell them. And then you'll be done with it. Because, I mean, I don't know what you're waiting for. You wait for him to, like, bring the woman in and fuck her on your bed? I mean, what are you, what, are, what, 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 what are you doing? Okay. Uh, anyway, next letter. Number two, I'm engaged to be married to a woman who is not carrying her weight in the relationship. I knew she wasn't working when I met her and moved her and her three children in with me until the wedding. The problem is that she and her children have no respect for themselves or for me. I do not ask for much from her children just to behave and be well-mannered. But anything you ask them to do, they complain or stomp off mad. I ask them nicely to do things and they don't do them because they say they don't want to. So this is definitely a source of friction between my fiance and myself. I called off the wedding last summer mainly due to this. I really love this woman. I've done everything for her and her children, but I'm not about to be disrespected in my own home. I gave her six months to do something about the way her children behave and time is up. They now act worse than they did six months ago. The children do not act like this at my friend fiance's mother's house because she spanks them when they get out of order. Their father spanks them when they get out of order. The only one who lets them behave like this is their mother, who treats them like babies. Oh, boy. These children are 12, 11, and 10. Certainly not babies. 
I feel guilty about breaking up with her because of the actions of her children, but I will never be happily married to her because of these brats. It's to the point I honestly do not want these kids in my home anymore. Please help. The first thing you need to do, sir, I'll talk about what you did later, but let's talk about what getting her up out of there first. The first thing you need to do is consult with an attorney about the residential laws in your municipality, because I don't, you didn't say where you live. Um, you know, people, have, there are different uh, rules. And some, like here, if someone has been in a residence for a certain period of time and they get mailed there, they're considered a, a tenant, they're, you know, a resident of that place. And if you want them out, you have to actually go through the formal eviction process. That means a court date, you got to serve them. I mean, it's, you know, all kind of stuff. Um, so consult with an attorney first. See what your rights are and, uh, you know, what's what you can do okay so once you have that information you don't tell her yet what you do is you go to her and say you know it's become obvious to me that this is not going to work um we're not going to get married i can't marry a woman and have children under my roof who behave like these children do they're so disrespectful and i'm just i know that I, if i married you i would be miserable so we need to start making plans for you and them kids to get up out of here so you know, you might want to find work, or if you was on Section 8, you need to, you know, re reactivate your vouchers so you can get some housing. And uh, I'll give you three months. And then after that, I'm putting you out. Now, that's just, like I said, if that's what you can do. You know, I'm, I'm just saying it. But consult with your attorney. Get the, get the legalities first. Because you might be able to just put them out today. I don't know. I don't know where you live. So there's no, i just shooting in the dark here. But... Okay, now and then, you know, you might even want to consult with the dad and the the kid's grandmother, you know, her mom, and see if they have any ideas about where they could go, you know, temporarily, maybe stay with the mama, stay with the daddy. I mean, you know, there may be some options there, so you have to investigate that as well. Now, for you, I have to say, did you not notice that these kids were bad-ass little brats before you brought them into your house? Did you not notice that? If you didn't notice that, then um, I'm wondering why. How long did you know this woman before you moved her into your house and decided that you wanted to marry her? So, you know, this is a big point of contention. I did a video about this um, some months ago, maybe last year, I don't remember, about these badass kids and how they impact women's relationships. And this is a perfect example. If you have, if you're a single mom and your kids are bad and disrespectful and you don't check them, this could be what ultimately ends up happening. You meet a nice guy who's willing to do everything for you, and he dumps your ass because you have some kids from hell. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. And plus, it's bad for the children to be to be given that kind of freedom and to mis disrespect people like that. So you know, this man's feeding them, putting a roof over their head, and and this is how this is what he gets. This is the thanks he gets. So I'm thinking. Um, you know, you're on the right track. Unfortunately, you should have done all of this due diligence before you moved her in and, uh, you know, got yourself entangled in this situation. It may cost you a lot of money to get up out of this situation, but whatever it costs is going to be less cost than it would to be married to her and then have to pay alimony and all that stuff. So, you know, even if you have to come out of pocket for $10,000 to, you know, move her and her kids, get a moving truck, move them wherever the fuck they're going to be, pay a first and last or whatever to help her get into place, you know, you might have to come out of pocket for some money. So be prepared for that. But um, she was living some kind of way to wherever she was living. She was living, you know, Section 8, I mean, welfare, what child support, what was she getting for, for money that enabled her to provide for these kids? Whatever that was, she needed to get reactivate all of that. And then uh, you be smarter next time, okay? Do some due, due diligence before you be, like, talking about marriage and moving somebody all up in your house like that. Letter number three. What do you do when you start dating again and your teenage daughter doesn't like the person you're seeing? Do you give up on that person or let it work out? I'm very recently divorced. Her father's already living with someone. She can't accept my new beau because he is 13 years my junior. I'm not sure if it's him or any man. Thanks for any advice you can give. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> you need your ass kicked. Number one, okay, you don't say how old this girl is. That's 
that would have been very vital information for me to know. Is she like 13 or is she 19? You know, there's a lot of years there that's teen. And um, so I'm not really sure which part of that we're talking about. But if he's 13 years younger than you, then he's probably closer to her age than, you, than he is to yours. You know what I mean? And what you have to think about, which you obviously did not, is you should not have been writing me this letter talking about you don't know if it's him or any man. Heifer, you were supposed to find that shit out. You're supposed to sit down with your daughter and ask her, is this particularly him or is it any man? See, that's vital information and you don't even have it. You didn't have enough interest in what's going on with your daughter's emotions to ask her that question. I'm just, this is really pissing me off. And secondly, you just got divorced, okay? She already lost her daddy, and now she's losing you to some knucklehead that's 13 years younger than you. You just dick chasing, the daddy's pussy chasing, and y'all are just, for both of you, are neglecting your daughter. She needs some stability right now. She needs to know that you are there for her. She needs some help working through her emotions, getting through this situation. And all you're doing is abandoning her to try to make her learn it, how to work this out by herself while you dick chase. Oh, my God. You just you just doing the most. I just don't understand this. And, you know, you also got to figure, too, okay, let's just say the girl's 13, 14 years old. You got this young dude around your daughter. How, what makes you think that he hasn't said something to her or touched her? You're just so dumb. I just can't believe it. You, there's a reason why your daughter is not comfortable with this man and she doesn't want him around. Okay, you need to find out what that is and stop being stupid. This is just ridiculous. These dudes are perverts like a motherfucker. And, um, you know, you got to make sure that you take care of your daughter. Her daddy is obviously stupid. That's evidently why you divorced him, okay? You, you have to acknowledge that. So you need to figure out, you only got, so, like, okay, you got a job, right? So you're only going to have, like, so much free time a day, and then on the weekends, and then that's the time you need to be spending with your daughter. Instead, you're going to be traipsing off spending with this dude. No. And I'm not saying you can't have a life, but what you need to do is have a life a little bit, like, away from your daughter. Don't bring that motherfucker to your house, and don't bring him around your daughter. You want to get some dick, you go to his house. And then you bring your ass home. Don't you spend the night over there. You bring your ass home and spend the night at your house with your daughter. Okay? She should not be left alone. This, you just, ooh, these people. And this, you know, I, I this really kind of stuff really bothers me. Because, it's, you know, you're getting a divorce. Think about how that makes the child feel, that her parents are no longer together. This is a rocky, even though it's very common, kids suffer the emotional upheaval from divorce for years, and some of them never get over it. So, you know, and it all depends on how the parents handle it. And you, are, you, are handling, you and your husband, ex-husband, are handling this extremely poorly. You guys are the worst. I just don't understand what you're thinking about. Oh, letter number four. Dear Deborah, I'm a white male looking for love. I think I'm a nice guy, but I can't seem to find anybody that would like a fat redhead. <laughs> I'm a good listener, but I don't talk much. I'm the person who likes to take it all in. I know it does not mean much, but I have my own house, a car, and a good job. What I'm looking for is a woman who has a job, her own money, and her own place to live. Is that asking too much? Being a nice person and having a good heart and kind to other people is I f okay he said fail feel is just a given I have a lot to offer I feel so what do you think the problem is can you help signed Kev yes Kev Kev my dear you okay I go by what people type okay because when people are looking for help they they put in the letter the things that are important to them Cause I'm not trying to read no 15,000 word thing, right? You got like so many words, I think it's 1,500 limit, thousand something limit on that form. So people, I say, you know, sum it up, tell me the important things. And this is what you focused on. So that's very telling. Nowhere in here did you talk about the internal qualities, you know, how she makes you feel, the emotional support, the love, the devotion, you know, the kindness, the gentleness, the passion, the intelligence, you know, can she cook? Is she a good mom? I mean, you didn't talk about any of that stuff. All you're doing is talking about some material shit that anybody can get. Okay, that just, I mean, what? I mean, what is that? I mean, and then I want you to think about, okay, you're talking about a house, a car. Again, material things. What is it about you? You say you're a nice guy, but what does that mean? 
What is it that you offer to a woman that would make her want to be with you? Okay, I, I'm sure she has her own house, car, and job. Okay, so that's a wash. What do you give her that she can't provide for herself? That is the key to having a good relationship. You know, what are you going to offer her that makes her think about you and smile? What are you going to do that warms her heart? What about you would make her make her say that you're a, a you know, wonderful man? What? I'm not seeing that. You talk about some some, you know, some simple bullshit. Okay, so like like for instance, you're talking about all this material stuff, right? Okay, so say uh, your house gets burglarized and somebody steals all your stuff and they burn the house down and they steal your car. So all you have left is your job, right? That's all you have left. Um, and then say you get injured, you know, so you can't work. So now you got no home, no car, and you can't work, so you don't you know, have no job. Okay, what is it that about you that would make a woman want to stay with you at that point? What's going on? You know, I think a lot of times guys focus on the wrong things, and this is a perfect example of it. You know, you should be focusing on what that woman brings, what richness that she brings to your life, what joy does she bring to your life, what peace of mind does she bring, instead of looking at, you know, a house, a car, and a job. I mean... That's basic adult shit. That's not anything stellar. You know, that doesn't say anything about a relationship. That's just like adulting, okay? Um, and then as far as this thing, you know, you're talking about you, li- you like to listen and you don't really have too much to say. Uh, women are very auditory creatures. We're very much into communication. And that's why players do so well with women. See, you've got a lot of you know, guys don't understand that. And they say, well, you know, you just women like thugs. You just, that's because these guys know how to, they have the gift of gab. If you listen to them, how they, they get women laughing, they say funny things, they get you, you know, your imagination stirred up with crazy stories. They're entertaining, funny, witty dudes. And women like to talk to them. Talk talk okay and that means that the guy has to talk back so if you're not talking to a woman she would have really lose interest in you because otherwise she could just go talk to her friends or talk you know just sitting there like listening it's like she's talking to herself that's boring dude that's you need to learn how to talk to women so i know it's going to be you know uncomfortable for you you probably afraid of rejection or something that's why you really don't want to talk but she needs to know about you what you feel what you think you know your experiences in life um you know um, you have to to be able to communicate those things like in my videos you notice i'm not just giving advice but you know off the top of my head i'm giving examples i'm telling people about things that happened in my life they're sharing my personal experiences or experiences of people that I have talked to or get provided advice to so the people can put the stuff I say in context and it's funny you know it's entertaining it draws people in and that's how you have to be if you want to be in a relationship you've got to have some kind of conversational abilities to uh, connect with a woman if you cannot connect with her verbally then how it is that you think that you're gonna get her heart I mean it's not like she's gonna walk up to you and oh Kev I love your fatness and your red hair Let's get married. She has to have, you have to share things to you about yourself with her. And that takes place via words. Okay. So, um, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be stepping outside your comfort zone, obviously, but you want to be an active participant in your relationship. And that means you have to learn how to talk. I don't know what to tell you. There's probably some books about it or websites or something about how to talk to people. But you can't be sitting around like a lump on a log and thinking somebody's going to fall in love with you and you're just sitting there looking at them. No, that'll never work. All right. Letter number five. I am an honest person. I realize that appearance is more vital to success than people like to admit. Okay, that's, that's very true. Recently, I read some advice on your site that encouraged a teenage girl to wear some makeup and get out of those baggy, ugly clothes that young ladies like to wear so much. Yeah. In other words, you know, look like a girl. And yet the response went on quite ironically, I think, to urge always be yourself. Not only is there an inherent contradiction in this advice, 
but I cannot agree that playing the game is the best solution to society's grotesque obsession with appearances. Nor do I agree that this is right for a person in your position to encourage girls to obsess even more over their appearances. Okay, this person must be ugly. Perhaps your advice is the most reasonable and rational in today's world with its petty obsessions. Wow. But as George Bernard Shaw said, reasonable people adapt themselves to the world. Unreasonable people attempt to adapt the world to themselves. All progress, therefore, depends on unreasonable people. No, it does not. George Bernard Shaw was an idiot. Okay. Well, Miss Thang here, let me explain something to you. Since you're so well read, obviously you have heard of the phrase that you only get one chance to make a first impression, right? I'm looking at this letter. I just want to reach the computer and choke the shit out of her. You've also probably heard of that very successful line of books. I think they also have a website called Dress to Impress. I mean, it's like, I don't know, worldwide billions of copies of sold of that book. Okay, It teaches people the concepts of how clothing and your presentation of appropriateness um, is paramount to your success in the world. Okay, because people in positions of power know how to do that. And if you want to get something from those people of positions of power, you have to fit in with them. Okay, and then you get some power. Then after you get that, then you can do what the fuck you want to do. But while you're still on the trying to get phase, which you, this teenage girl was, she need to learn what the rules are. Okay, you can't show up on a job interview in a booty cutter shorts, hot pants, you know, the, the high heel stilettos, and a, and, a, and a belly shirt. Okay, that's inappropriate. Now, I don't care what you think about what I said because you wasn't the one that I was answering. So your opinion about it is kind of irrelevant. But, you know, if a girl goes around, okay, you know, she's looking like she's like, you know, could be standing on the street corner. Okay, well, people are not going to take her seriously. It doesn't, she could be the nicest girl in the world. She could have a straight A average. But the presentation that she's giving is one of somebody who is a slut. Okay, and if she doesn't want to be viewed as that, she wants to be taken seriously. She wants to get, a, you know, the job offers where she's making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. She wants to be elected, you know, for office. She wants to do all these things. Okay, that's not the presentation that you put out when you want to be taken seriously as a professional and an intellectual person of, you know, some capabilities. Okay. Likewise, if you're walking around looking baggy and dirty like a homeless person, you will also not be taken seriously because, you know, it's like what you're trying to be like a rapper or something. I mean, you know, you sagging like a dude. I mean, what is what's going on with you? Why are you dressed like that? What is it that you're trying to communicate to people by looking the way that you're looking? And that's, you know, that's just the reality of what, what's, what's going on. Now, you want to say that, um, what's this phrase you use here? Uh grotesque society's grotesque obsession with appearances it's not grotesque what that's telling me though is you must be ugly and fat and you dress funny that's what that means and you trying to find an excuse to do it fuck out of here anyway uh deb cooper from survivingdating.com y'all make me i swear to god this is a good thing this is the ending in two days because i'm about to be an alcoholic y'all be tripping this is a little to this little girl go somewhere with that and stop dressing stupid you know think about your future here i uh so anyway yeah you guys if you got questions you know you have but you got comments about what i said or what the question you know the questions that came in today be sure to put them in the comment section please share some of these links for the advice questions i keep forgetting to say that share 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 please share you know post on your walls tweet them whatever you want to do because um, this is something I'm thinking about. I might, uh, you know, make a regular part of the channel. I got to figure out how to work it in there, though. Like, you know, so many days a week do this. I, I don't know. I got to think about it. So if you have any ideas, you can post them down below, too. But, you know, the link for submitting your question for consideration to be done in a video here on the channel will be in the uh, show description box below. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here with me on this beautiful Sunday afternoon.